Okay. I am so excited to be doing this training and I'm going to tell you why. Um, so, well, first of all, my name is Edie. Um, most people call me Edie Ann. Uh, that is my social media name for the most part. And the reason that that came to be was so that people knew that I was a girl and not Eddie. <laughs> um, I live in a town of about 190 people, which made me need to use social media in order to be successful within my Sensi business. I love what I do. And in order for me to, um, I don't think it froze. Nope. Am I okay with everyone? I think we're all set, but if you are getting some frozen screens, then you're going to want to make sure that you pop out and pop back in. Okay. Okay. Um, so most of the time it's your internet connection that's causing issues. So Okay. All right. Let's jump right in, shall we? Um, I want to make sure that you all can see my screen for one. And let's find my... Okay. All right. Can all you see the screen? Tips to successful hostess coaching. First and foremost, I think it's super important for you to understand that hostess coaching is probably one of the most important things to having a successful party because it is super important that your hostess understands what's expected of them. Okay. So to start off, I want you to understand that you need to get to know your hostess or your host. Okay. Um, first and foremost, how do they want to communicate? Do they want to communicate through email, through phone, through text? What is on their wish list? Right? What do they want to earn? Why are they having the party in the first place? Is it because they want to get free stuff or because they're thinking of joining and they want to see how to do this virtual partying thing? Okay. So it's super important for you to first get to know your host. All right. Secondly, make a checklist so that you and the host don't forget what needs to be done. Okay. That way it helps you both stay on track. Now we're going to talk about different things to do to make this hostess coaching easier for you. Um, but this is going to give you some quick tips as to how to be successful with hostess coaching. Okay. Make sure they understand how to invite right? We're going to talk about that as well. You're going to want to stay connected with your host right up until the party. Don't schedule and then drop. In other words, don't schedule the party and then drop the communication. It's vital that you stay communicated, communicating with them, okay? Or connected with them. Make sure they understand exactly what you expect. Kiss. Keep it sensey simple, Okay? If you expect too much from them, they won't want to do it, right? If it's overwhelming, they're not going to want to do it. Keep it sensey simple. Give them the tools that they need to succeed. If they need some pictures to post, give them some pictures to post. Give them ideas. If they need scripts for inviting, give them the scripts. Give them some ideas of what they can do to invite people. 
and get them a hostess kit in their hand so that they can get some pre-orders. Okay, and we're going to talk about that too. Make them feel super special. Why? Because they are, right? They chose you to be their consultant for this party. They are super special. Okay, so remember that it's about them and not about you. Okay, and then maybe give them an incentive, a gift for accomplishing these things that you're asking them to do. Right? Some ideas are giving them an incentive or a gift for getting five pre orders, for getting to 500 in sales, maybe for having 10 active guests during the party. Okay? Those are some ideas that you can do. Um, you can take screenshots, but I am going to be uploading these slides to the group. Okay? just so that you have access to them. Um, Cause I did notice that there is, um, let me actually get rid of this. That might help. Okay. Um, and see if potentially, um, I'd like to get rid of the background. Hmm. And I can't get rid of these funky little things on here. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's more like it. All right. Get rid of those funky little things so that you can see the full screen, but I will upload these, um, to the group. Okay. Um, okay. So let's dig in. Um, and the first thing is that we want to make sure that we are communicating well with your hostess, right? So here are some skills on <clears throat> how to talk with your hostess, how to communicate with them. Um, teaching skills to help you with host coaching. Okay. One of the things that I learned as a teacher is that teach, tell, teach, tell is a skill that people use to teach so that the student can retain Well, your hostess is your student. Okay. So if you use the teach, tell, uh, tell, teach, tell protocol or way of teaching, it's going to help you with your hostess coaching and for them to retain the information that you're giving them. Okay. So you're going to tell them what to expect. You're going to teach them how to do it. And then you're going to tell them again so that they can review what's expected. Okay. Teach them what to expect, explain what you want them to do. If you don't tell them what you want them to do, they're not going to know what to do. Okay. Talk to them and find out about them and what, they expect. So not only do you expect something from them that they might expect something from you. So you need to have that communication, right? So we're going to tell each other what we expect from each other. Then we're going to teach you how to do it. Let's teach the hostess how to do that. Okay. Show them what to post, provide pictures and scripts. If you need to show them how to tag their friends by tagging them in a post. Okay. Share how to invite guests to make them feel special and wanted at the party. Maybe give them some scripts. Okay. Share um, or teach them the Frank's technique, right? We use that with our consultants and how to get new guests or how to get new hostesses. Use the Frank's technique with your hostesses so that they can choose guests, friends, relatives, associates, neighbors, kids, friends, parents and your spouse's friends, okay? Show them how to follow up with guests after the party. 
Ask them if you want them, if you, if they want you to follow up with the guests, maybe they don't want you to connect with the guests in that respect, ask them. And if they, if you can help them, then you can follow up with the guests too. Okay. I want to make sure I'm seeing all of the comments. Okay. Um, so that's teaching them how. Now you want to tell them again so that you can review that, right? So you're going to review the expectations and you're going to review their wish list. We need to remind them why, why they're having this party in the first place, right? And then stay in communication with them from the start, middle, and after the party. Don't schedule and drop, okay? Also, throughout this process, it is super important as a consultant to always stay upbeat, excited, and be honored to serve them. Again, it's about them, not you, right? They chose you to be their consultant. And for that, you should appreciate them wholeheartedly. And remember that your energy is going to feed the party. If you are ho-drum monotone, that party is going to be monotone. It's going to be very boring. They are going to feed off the energy that you give it, whether you are doing static posts or going live. The energy that you have is the energy that they will feel. If you are animated, that energy will feed itself into your party. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. So now that we've set expectations, we're going to tell them, we're going to teach them, and we're going to tell them again what the expectations are, right? What types of things do we want to um, provide them? Do we want to give them pictures? Do we want to provide them with ways to communicate with their guests? Do we want to provide them with ways to interact on the party itself? Right? Do we want to give them images to thank their guests? Do we want to give them images to invite their guests? Do we want to give them images to do polls during the party, to have some interaction, right? So these are all ways that we can help them. Oops, okay. Do we want to share with them why they would have a party in the first place, right? Maybe this is something you send to the hostess themselves. Maybe that's something that you put in the party to help book other, other parties, right? Some interactions, some, some interactive posts, something to ignite the thought process, okay? Um, this is also something that you can share with your hostess to share online, so that people understand what a Facebook or a virtual party is. Okay. So these are just ideas. Okay. <clears throat> these are just ideas. Now, what do you send the hostess? What do you give them so that they can be successful? What do you put in your hostess kit? catalogs, right? You want them to get orders, pre-orders. Why do you want them to get pre-orders? Because it helps towards the rewards of the party, right? It's almost like saying, well, if you don't get any orders during your party, at least you've got these orders before. And I always give them a, a, an incentive of five orders, get five pre-orders and I'll give you um, a six pack of scent circles, whatever. And you're going to look at their wish list, right? Um, you might even just give them a super special sample pack, right? That's always a great gift because it's a little less expensive. 
It's going to give them an opportunity to try things they might not have tried, right? And everybody can offer them, okay? Make sure you include order forms. Make sure you include information on joining and include the hostess exclusive kit information, right? Especially if they're doing a party because they wanna see how it works. Include your business card. Potentially a hostess gift saying something to say thank you for hosting the party um, and choosing you as a consultant. Right? Something to make them smile, really. Um, the rewards chart. They want to know what they're going to earn from hosting a party. You need to include that. And a personalized letter to your hostess from you right? We're all about making them feel special. We need to make them feel like they are the most important person on the face of this earth at this moment. They chose you, remember? So do a personalized letter to them. Thank them for hosting the party. Maybe give them some tips on how to have a successful party. And I'm going to share something with you here in a minute, okay? That you could potentially include. I think that we overlook the importance of hostess coaching. I think that we forget that our hostess is really what can make or break a party. And not only are you responsible for the party? But so are they. They become your co-consultant during a party. Um, you know, you can host a party at your own home, but as a consultant, you still become the host and you still need the home and you as the host to have the party run. So if you don't have a host, who's going to provide a place for you to have this party, to show the guests what products you have, then there is no party. So that's why it is so important for them to understand their importance in this role, right? Are you all with me? Do you still, I'm not seeing any comments. So I'm just making sure that you guys are all still here. Okay. I want to share with you reasons why parties fail. The number one reason that parties fail is the hostess's MIA. If the guests don't see the hostess interacting, they're going to think that he or she is not actually there. So they leave the party too. This would be, okay, thank you for confirming guys. This would be no different than having a home party and all the guests are arriving and they're sitting in the living room and the hostess gets up and goes and sits in their bedroom and shuts the door or they actually leave the house, right? If the hostess is MIA, everybody else will be too. And that will make a dud party. Period. Okay? Number two, no one is being welcomed to the party. I want you to envision going to somebody's house and not being welcomed in the door and not being invited to come in, and not being thanked for showing up. That would make me feel completely unwanted or unappreciated for being there, and I would want to turn around and leave. Wouldn't you? That's the second reason parties fail. The third reason is no one is liking or commenting on posts. Now, you don't have complete control over this. But if you have a hostess that's interacting 
And maybe you recruit somebody to come in and do some liking and commenting with you and be kind of a co-consultant or a co-hostess, there's going to be more energy. There's going to be more likes. There's going to be more commenting and people are going to interact. If there's no energy in the party, no one will interact or participate. Guaranteed. Okay. Number four, no one is being acknowledged when they place an order. Everybody wants to feel special. They want to be appreciated for the efforts that they made to give something to the hostess. If the hostess is not thanking people for their orders, they're going to feel pretty used, right? The hostess is gaining something from that person's order. So they need to know that they have to thank these people. And thanking them in a group, thanking them at the house party is something that's going to happen. The hostess is going to say, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for ordering. Thank you for helping me get some free stuff, right? They need to feel appreciated. Again, it's not about you, the consultant. It's about the guests. It's about the hostess. And the hostess needs to know that it's not necessarily about her when it comes to the guests ordering, right? So they need to be thanked, okay? And the other thing that's nice is somebody gets thanked publicly, somebody else is going to be like, oh, I want to get appreciated. And they're probably going to place an order. Okay. Number five, the party's just downright boring, right? The party is downright boring. You are not upbeat. You're not encouraging interaction. You're not tagging hosts and guests. The hostess isn't tagging hosts and guests. You're not playing games. And I don't mean that you have to play games that have prizes. If you do, that's fine. Just stay within compliance, okay? Please stay within compliance. But play some games. Interact with them, right? Ask questions. Create some polls. Ask them what products they have tried, right? If the party is boring. Everybody's going home. Nobody's going to buy. Nobody's going to stay, right? So keep it upbeat. Your energy is going to feed into this party, right? Use your energy. Influx the love that you have for Sensi. Let them feel it and ask the hostess to do the same thing. Right? If she's having a Sensi party, more than likely she's already tried Sensi and she are, she loves it because now she wants some free stuff. Right? Have her share that. Don't let the boring party be the reason that your party is a flop. Okay? I like that. I always didn't want to call anyone out because maybe they didn't want people to order, but who wouldn't want to be appreciated? And yeah, exactly. We do it at home parties all the time. A home party and a virtual party should really be the same. The only difference is that you're not physically there. That's all, right? That's all. So number six, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm, Edie, that's harsh. Yeah, I know. But have you ever been to a party that the consultant had no idea what she was talking about? She didn't know her products. She didn't know the host. She didn't know the guests or what they wanted to learn or what they wanted to do. I always ask, when I go to a home party, I always ask, do you guys want to play games? I'll bring games with me. If you don't want to play games, we won't play games. I do the same thing with my virtual parties. Do you want to play games? Do you want to have a theme? Do you want to have them post pictures of them wearing purple? And if they wear purple, then we get to celebrate with them. Right? But know your products. <laughs> we have a product guide. This product guide should be your holy grail. Actually, I use this as my outline for my parties so that I don't forget products and I can answer questions. This product guide is amazing. Use it. Use it. Know your products. Okay? Know your hostess. Get to know your hostess. That was something I said at the very beginning, right? Get to know her. Why is she having this party in the first place? You know, is she... Listen... 
They could have just had a fire and she could have lost all of her sensey stuff. And now we're restocking her sensey goodness, right? If you don't know that, that's a pretty important piece to the reason she's having this party. And if you don't know that, that's sad, right? You need to know those things. So you need to know what you're talking about. Okay. That's the number six reason that parties fail. So this, this outline is actually a great reason or get, not a great reason, but a great way to make sure that you're doing these things so that you do have a successful party. Right. Okay. Um, I think I've gone through all my slides except for this last one. And this last one I think is fairly important because this is what you're going to give to your um, hostesses. This is what you're going to give to your hostess so that she knows and has something that she can utilize to help her be the best hostess possible. And it's also a tool for you to make sure that it's, um, that you're touching these topics with them. Okay. So I'm going to leave it in half screen because if I do this, it blocks out some of it. That's too small. So we're going to do this, but I am going to upload this for you. Um, so that you can see it better. I'm going to put this in, um, the group. Okay. All of these slides are going to go in the group. Um, hostess coaching tips. These are the seven things, six, seven, eight things that a hostess needs to do. And these are the things that you should be expecting from them. So these are the teach, uh, the tell, teach, tell things that you're going to do with your hostess. Okay. So to wrap up everything that we just talked about tonight, um, hostess coaching tips. So first and foremost, we're going to invite, we're going to personally invite 30 to 50 friends max. We're going to message each person individually and personally. Nobody likes mass invites to anything. They need to know you really want them at, the, at your party and post on social media and tag them. That's the invite. Secondly, you're going to post. You're going to create a welcome post in the group or the event as soon as all your guests have been invited. Share your experience with your products and post regularly in the party so that they can see your excitement. You are excited. They're excited. Tag. You're going to tag responsibly, not willy nilly. Tag responsibly. I say that often. See a product you think they might like? Tag them. Be specific with your tagging. Uh, also, if we play any games or have interactive posts, tag them so that they can play along. Okay. Comment. Comment on every single post. If you don't, they will think you left the party. Make sure they see you there. If you leave, they leave. Your guests probably don't know me. They want to hear from you. Ask. Ask all the questions. Even if you think you know the answer, ask. Your friends may be too shy to ask, and you may ask a question they want to know the answer to. It also shows you're interested. Thank. Thank them for coming. Thank them for playing along. Thank them for ordering. Everyone loves to feel appreciated. Oh, and by the way, thank you. I appreciate you choosing me to be your consultant. Fun and interactive. Not only do we want to earn you tons of free and half off products, but we want this party to be a blast. If your guests see you having fun, they will too. And in turn, you will get more orders towards your rewards and checking things off your wish list. And bonus, get five pre-party orders. This will help you get your rewards. Ask about my hostess incentives. So this is something that you could make into a postcard. You could just send them the picture in Messenger or on a text. That way they know what is expected from them. It's all here for them. It's in their language from you, the consultant, to them as the host. Okay? 
That is hostess coaching, guys. That is it in a nutshell. Do you have any questions while I'm here live with you that I can help you with? I'm going to go through some of the questions here and see if there's anything. Oh, and if you have a dud party, it's okay. We all do. Move on, book another one. That's the beauty of virtual parties is that you could potentially have eight virtual parties in a day. If you have an eight hour work day and you want to put in eight one hour parties, then do it. And the beauty is that you can have more than that during a week's time. You can do whatever you want. It is much easier to reschedule a party or book a new party for virtual parties because you have so many options to have more during the week. Home parties, you can too, but you're more limited because of the time constraints to travel there, to have the party, and then to travel back home. Virtual parties, you can have tons, right? So get over the big bad dud demon, right? Move past it, move on. Learn from the duds so that you can have more successful Facebook and virtual parties, okay? All right, I will keep an eye on this thread. If there are more comments or questions, um, I will answer them through the comments. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you found this valuable and helpful towards booking more parties or hostess coaching to have more successful parties. And I will see you on the page. Thanks everyone for joining me. I appreciate you very much.